Hello, everyone. This is the um, October 12th edition of the uh, Public Works Committee, also my sister's birthday. Uh, I'm joined by Bernie Flynn and Lisa Dorsey. Um, the other usual suspects are here uh, from the department heads. Uh, item number two, a comment, suggestions, petitions by residents and attendants regarding items not on the agenda. Uh, item number three, discuss stormwater damages and issues from Tropical Storm Ida. This presentation will be put up on the screen with it. Okay, so um, I was lucky to be out of the country at the time, so I didn't get to see the storm. But I saw the effects of the storm. On the first page, um, this happened during the storm. Uh, 200 South Franklin Street, just south of Bernard. Um, a sinkhole developed about seven feet wide and 10 feet long. It was about seven feet deep. Um, in the first photo in the top left, you could see the water mains exposed there. Um, he brought in a contractor this past week. Uh, put, we played it over it in the meantime. Uh, tried to get some video camera to see what, the, what caused the damage and that type of thing. Uh, not able to get close enough to it at the time because of all the stone and debris that had fallen into the storm system. That is a... Um, see the bottom picture that pipe is a 42 inch pipe uh, this photo is actually taken approximately 110 feet downstream of where the failure occurred so there's about 100 feet debris at the bottom of the pipe uh, had a contractor come in to perform the repair um, we opened up the hole uh, he flushed out once once he separated the pipe. Uh, you could see in the pipe with the, la the the photo with the ladder in it. That was what they excavated without touching anything. So right where the ladder sits, uh, that pipe is bas basically gone. It just filled up with debris. Um, they uh, we cleaned up the area. We flushed out the pipe. Found that we need two more sections, a minimum of two more sections of pipe, so a minimum of 60 feet of pipe to repair it. So we had to put it on order and additional pipe to arrive. That's probably going to take to two weeks. So again, that the plates are covering the, the hole now. On the second page is uh, College Avenue. The top left photo shows the inlet on College Avenue at, uh, I think it's See the address on mine, but uh, second, 423 College Avenue. So that's right, right in front of the house there, and right behind the curb, the second photo. That's right behind the curb. There's an exposed pipe there. Uh, it's an 18-inch CMP pipe, and it's actually eroded. The uh, bottom of the pipe is uh, rusted and rotten, and there is no bottom of pipe any longer from there to the uh, Plum Run Creek, Plum Run. And uh, it's about 200 feet of pipe that's gonna have to be repaired and replaced. The first photo, uh, sorry, let me, just going back real quick, just to let you know, Franklin Street is probably gonna cost around $50,000 to repair. So we're in the process and hopefully within the next two weeks that'll be done. Um, this one, concern is it's right behind the curb on College Avenue. You can see three photos that the uh, pipe's exposed. That's about 
two and a half to three feet deep right behind the curb and it's right next to that tall evergreen in the front in the top left photo so we have a threat of potentially that ever falling because of this um, so we're probably going to be looking at doing that relatively soon probably going to be the next on the agenda to not on the agenda but on our list of repairs that we're going to have our contract to do on the last page um, we have two locations um, 317 Marshall Street, uh, East Marshall. This is over by the hospital. There is actually a, uh, let's see, it's a 36 inch pipe that uh, goes from the inlet in East Marshall Street between two homes and goes back toward Hillside Drive in, in that development there. pipe you can't really tell but there was uh, several sinkholes in the person's side yard between the houses and in the front yard um, videoed the, uh, the pipe there's actually no bottom you can kind of see rock at the lower portion of that photo on the right hand side uh, there is no bottom on that pipe and that's why it's all eroding water just comes through and just undermines everything and takes whatever soil with it we filled that uh, this the original incident occurred I believe it was in the, the storm in the middle of August and then once again it happened in, in September we filled we filled everything with uh, stone and uh, soil uh, but this is something that's going to need to be addressed because the sinkholes are getting bigger getting closer to the person's home so um, this is probably estimate about 180 pipe that we're gonna have to replace. and the last one I have here is actually on this uh, you can see the little sinkhole it's really small it's maybe about the size of a, a golf hole at a golf course uh, it's right in front of the inlet on the south west corner of East Minor and Matlack uh, we put a camera in the inlet and basically we couldn't even move the camera because it's a brick pipe um, under there and as you can see it's about half to two-thirds full of debris uh, so this one this is a, a smaller it's actually in the intersection it's from that inlet you see in the right to the manhole in the center of the intersection so that section it's about 20 to 30 feet you have to replace that brick uh, pipe with another material and my preference is to go with concrete pipe there so I just I just wanted to show an update of what some of the things that came up after the storm Hopefully that's all the bad news I'll have for you. Uh, if I can add something to the conversation, uh, individual assistance has been made available through Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, to um, residents in Chester County. That's been known for uh, been poking around to see if there would be public assistance. Um, in other words, money made available for recovery efforts, damage sustained during I to local municipalities. And we just got word the end of last week that determination was made. So I'm working with Al to make sure we're following best practices to document all this and we'll have more information in the coming weeks about, you know, possibility of uh, getting some funding to help pray these costs. Is there any uh, action we need to take this evening then? No, not at this time. We are effectuating emergency repairs, and as soon as we know the dollars amount, dollar amount, we'll let you all of council know. Is that we have to do that as part of the straight financial procedures? Just double checking. So at this point, we only know for the Franklin Street damage, the other three we don't. The other three, I haven't had a contract to look at it. We would only have, we have one contractor, the emergency services contractor. Uh, obviously, I took the, contacted them to take a look at the worst case scenario that we have. Obviously, the one sinkhole that a car could fall into is a. Uh, any comments or uh, comments, questions from people attending the meeting? Item number four, adopt a resolution and authorize entering into winter maintenance services agreement with snow and ice removal on PennDOT roadways throughout the borough 
for the winter of 2021-2022. Uh, this is a um, kind of an ongoing uh, uh, agreement we have with PennDOT, and they basically pay the borough to have for the borough public works department to plow and salt all the PennDOT roadways within the borough. Uh, this was sent to me by them back in July, early August. And uh, upon my review of it, I, no I noticed that there was some errors, actual streets that they had on there. I noted, I, I contacted them and we discussed and over all the PennDOT roads that I was aware of, they agreed with me and they were actually 1.4 lane miles short on what they were doing this in the past. So uh, since they were updating that, they, were going, they wanted to enter into contract rather than just extend the original agreement. Um, so you have, on, on the bottom you have, there was an increase from $27,770 to $29,600 roughly for 2022. Um, and then you have the schedule for the next five years down in the bottom right hand side. Assuming that all the, the roads still stay the same and there's no change. Um, so over the five years, we're, we're expecting to get 154,000 from PennDOT uh, to the roads. So this, this is just, uh, they gave me a new agreement uh, to have executed, and as part of that agreement, they wanted a resolution by borough council uh, to this agreement. I'd like to maybe just add a couple more details to Al's presentation, and thank you, Al, for a real close reading of that contract and finding that extra revenue for us. I really appreciate that. It's the boring things that us bureaucrats do, but sometimes sometimes it pays off, and I really appreciate that. Um, we sent it to the solicitor for her review, as we do with all contracts, and she was, mild, to put it mildly, dissatisfied. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these agreements with PennDOT are, to use her phrase, take it or leave it type agreements. <coughs> Correct. Um, but what we are gonna ask for is a, uh, non-renewal clause right now, the draft they sent over to us self-renews, auto-renews, and I never like contracts that auto-renew because you tend to not pay attention to them. Um, so we're gonna see if we can get that detail uh, fixed and Al took care of monetary issue. The other things we're not going to quibble over with having the advice of the solicitor. So to take action, we need to get a uh, final document from the solicitor? Yeah, we will uh, we'll prepare a um, final document and we are looking for a resolution next week to, to approve it. So that we are looking for that one change. I don't know if that is in the draft or not. It, it's not in their draft. I've actually had played phone tag with the, the person at PennDOT today. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to discuss with her. So I'll, I'll have an answer pretty much by tomorrow. Uh, if they'll agree to. That. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't agree to that. That's that's really my. Uh, every you know all the other items. It's there, there's a lot of thing in this contract, but at the end of the day, plow the streets. They're going to pay us for it. So as long as we do the job, there shouldn't be any issue. All right. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions, comments from people attending the meeting? Council. Thank you. Now, go to item number five. Uh, consider request to amend chapter 104, vehicle and traffic article three, parking regulations 104-32. Parking prohibited during certain hours as re to read as shown below. Uh, street is South Brandywine, east side. Today's hours location, Wednesday 8 to 11, no parking, West Union to Dean Street. And then the next day, Thursday, west side of South Brandywine, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. That is for street cleaning. Yes, we received an email back in September requesting the 
to designate the no parking on Wednesday, 8 to 11, and on Thursday. Uh, the only thing that concerns me is that the email admitted that they, if they wanted street sweeping at that location, they just asked for no parking between those times. So uh, that's the only concern that I have on that. So I would specify that uh, it's for street sweeping purposes. Is there any is there any other reason that a resident would have we're just assuming it's i mean it makes right. sense right the yeah. street sweeping i mean the the, the block to immediately south several blocks immediately south actually there is uh it's designated as no parking um to 11s on, on wednesdays and thursdays and we do street the uh, do the street sweeping there so it's just a matter of extending it one block thanks just once I'd live, I'd love to give parking back to people. <laughs> um, so that's a free up. Uh, uh, before we continue, any comments, questions from people in the uh, item number five is a three out. Item number six authorize the leasing of a new Ford F600 dump body with winter maintenance upfitting at an estimated monthly lease rate of $1,700. Well, your baby. This is about the, the third time I've come to you for this. Um, obviously, you know that the F550, that one of the two F550s that we had, the engine, the engine was bad. Uh, it was, I believe, sixteen thousand or, or so to get repaired. Uh, it was a, don't remember the year exactly, but I want to say it was a 2011 or, or 10, something in that. Range. So it was an older vehicle. You see a, a good reason to put $16,000 into the vehicle old and have it for another year or two. So uh, what we're looking to do is replace that. Uh, as a side note, uh, in, at our August meeting, I suggested that we uh, put that vehicle, add that vehicle to our list of vehicles that we were advertising on Municipid, and that vehicle did sell, uh, actually sold for $22,600. So we're, we're hoping that uh, we can get a new placement vehicle in order to do our snow plowing this winter. And I want to add a few more sure. bits of information here. Um, Al's been very clear about the Public Works Department need for this uh, smaller size dump body truck, and I, I support that decision. Uh, we just have been running up against financial issues. We just didn't have the money to pay for it. Upfitting for this year, in spite of, in spite of the transaction Al just told you about, um, we just didn't have the cash, and that was a conversation we had with the director. Since we had that conversation and, and since this agenda was put together, some good news financially uh, from uh, uh, one of our insurance providers. We haven't calculated it, but I know it's going to be a positive variance for us going into 2022. So I, I would just ask that we, we, instead of making a recommendation right yet, that give us another week to, to the, put the numbers back into the budget, make sure Barb's happy with it. I, I, I think we should be able to wires on this, um, but I don't want to be premature until we've put the budget together. Because the important thing about a budget is a, a budget never exists in any one line item or any one purchase never exists in isolation from the other. Now that we've put the, a, the whole thing, so if we're putting Asking any more spending on the spend side, we have to account for it. Some spending somewhere else, or for it's revenue on the other side, it has to balance. The seesaw has to balance. So let us do a work on that. Get you an answer next week. That's our sounds good. Um, yeah, that's fine. Failing that, if Lisa would agree, I, we could give you a preliminary. That's good. Glad to hear about that. Uh, put extra money in there. It always helps. Uh, any comments from? Did you want to make a comment? I'm like, come on up. That 
split offset smoke sensor. Um, I see your reasoning. Two things aren't connected. I'm talking about a 2022 item, and we're paying for these repairs probably in the next couple of months. So we're using liquid dollars. We could be possibly using screen protection dollars um, to pay for it, to, to pay the contractors, and then maybe seek reimbursement through. So hopefully, it's crossed. Uh, you know, Reduce the net cost of these, these emergent repairs. But um, Ms. De Baptiste makes a good point. Stuff happens. Things break. And it's good to have. Yeah, things happen. But the, the positive variance I was talking about earlier has to do with bills we haven't even gotten yet built next year and factors that go into next year's budget. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go to item number seven. Uh, this is a uh, pretty much a housekeeping matter. Authorize the sale of the 2006 Ford Econoline E350 maintenance van and the parking enforcement 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee on Municipid. There's actually another one I need to add. Oh, no. uh, that's all right. Um, we have a 2006. Ford Explorer, that's a, a parking vehicle. Um, it's a 2006, it's actually scheduled for replacement for next year, but uh, there is a knocking sound in deep in the engine block. It's a 2006, so obviously we don't want to replace it just to sell it in March or April of next year. So we'd like to just put that on the submit also. Okay, there'd be a 3 for that, to proceed with that. Um, item number eight, discuss the street light node purchase for over a thousand lights in the borough at a cost of $95,000 in 2021 and an estimated installation cost of $150,000 in 2022 to be put out for public bid. Yes. Um, the streetlight nodes have been ordered. They're in the process of building the order, programming the nodes, setting up the program, the whole process they have to do uh, in setting up these nodes. Um, they expect to be delivered in early November. Uh, and at that time, I'm going to be putting out on pen bid for an electrical contractor to do the installation. Part of the installation is uh, installing an adapter socket for the nodes, installing the nodes and, and just going throughout the borough and light and have out there. So once that's done, then activating the system it should, should resolve issues that we have with. That was very near and dear to my heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm happy to hear that the nodes have been ordered. Um, and I'm hoping that because this is something that residents have been waiting for for two years now, right? We have problems with the street lights, the borough street lights. I'm hoping that we can be creative in getting the installation done sooner rather than later. I realize, you know, there's a, a miss in the 2021 budget that, you know, no one's fault here, <laughs> but I have gotten multiple complaints about how dark the streets are and daylight savings right around the corner are about to get darker. I know my ward is very dark at night. Um, so if there's any way that we can, I was hoping that maybe we could order half now and start the install early. And, and I understand there were some concerns with cost there. Well, there's um, cost and also the programming and the of the program. 
uh, so that that's part of the reason why it can't be done. can't order half of them now uh, and it's also easier to just go through start at one end of one one road and start installing on both sides of the road rather than jumping all over the road, just picking individual lights it also makes it a nightmare to program the system then because mm -hmm. if you sequential order it's you know street light number one through 100 gets uh, turned on at this time and that it's easier to program everything otherwise you've got mixed you know light number one two and three go with 127 through 180 too difficult to track it. Okay. Um, is there an ETA then, at least, that we can start communicating to parents? I, I parents, residents. Oh. Um, I did hear, you know, you're going to put it out to Muni bid. I'm uh, not Muni bid. Pen, uh, bid. pen bid in November. Yes. And then when would we expect to start the work? Uh, I put it out in November to be bid, and December, looking to get Borough Council to award the contract. So that they could start essentially in first of January. Thank you. Thank you. See the light. Say that. Uh, item number nine. Uh, or any comments, questions from all at the meeting? Okay. Item number nine, approve entering an agreement with ARCA for recycling Freon products at a cost of five dollars per. Item, Stu Williams. May I just clarify something? Will my apologies with the last item we were the committee was in favor of that being put on the agenda. Correct. Good evening, Will Wood, Sustainability Director. So, uh, the borough currently accepts refrigerators, standalone freezers like chest freezers, air conditioners, and dehumidifiers for recycling. These appliances. Contain Freon if we remember the zone hole. That was solved when we Freon, which was escaping the atmosphere. So um, we uh, people can drop them off or we can arrange pickup for a fee through Public Works. Uh, residents pay $35 for a large item like a refrigerator, $25 for a smaller item like a AC unit. We handle about a dozen a month just to put this in scale. This is pretty small potatoes. Um, we store those appliances down at Snyder Ave, and uh, once we get a critical mass, they get picked up. This program was put on pause during the early days of the pandemic. Restarted this year. Um, however, during the pandemic, the uh, company that was picking up and taking care of the Freon and everything, they went out of business. Um, at the time, we were getting charged $8 per appliance from that company called Reclaim, but then they have literally disappeared. Um, so this is an agreement with a company called Arca Recycling. They have multiple locations in the Delaware Valley. Uh, only with the appliance recycling programs through PICO. They do a lot of that work contracted with PICO. So they're always running trucks in our area. Um, under this agreement, they'll charge us $5 per appliance and pick up again whenever we get a critical mass. Um, most importantly, maybe I know Al is concerned about this, but like I said, we started this a few months ago. We started taking these, and we've got quite a pile going at Snyder Avenue. Get rid of that pile. So perhaps most importantly, they can come out, and as soon as we get this agreement in place, they can fix that pile. Their site cleaned up. They also take non-Freon appliances, so this is not something we, um, I think, reclaimed it as well. We, we haven't really marketed it for as a service. But um, they can handle other appliances like uh, stoves and dishwashers, whatever, um, which would help keep the expensive, the, the valuable material out of the land, save space in the landfill. My, my knowledge of chemistry is limited to how much sugar I put in my coffee. <laughs> Um, but I was just curious, is, is Freon something that could be used for other purposes besides refrigeration? It's a good question. I don't know. Um, but there's a certification process for the there's a certification for the reclamation uh, process. So I don't know what they do with it, but um, this is why these folks are in business. Um, they cheaply and selling the scrap, obviously, to make the money. 
That's a good question. question. I have no idea what happens to it. Maybe it's reused. Uh, any questions, comments? Any comments, questions from people attending the meeting? Is there anything? No, I'd just like to say congratulations to Will and his new wife. <laughs> there you go. All right, so item number um, nine would be it, 3 recommendation. Item number 10, approve the final waste well partnership agreement, discounted curbside composting service at a cost of $1 per customer per month. Me again. Um, so last month, if you'll recall, Borough Council approved the framework of an agreement with Wastewell uh, to provide a discounted uh, curbside composting collection at a substantial discount. It's almost 20% to a full paying customer. And for every 10 customers that we sign up, Wastewell will service a low income household at a 95% discount. Um, about 6% of that discount will be paid by the borough. Um, that's in recognition of the real tangible uh, savings and tipping fees that we'll enjoy when people sign up for this. Um, net of the payment back to Wastewell for that 6% of the discount, uh, each household that signs up, we expect will save the borough $3 per year. Um, the next and final step before we can roll this out is approval of this agreement. So again, last month was sort of a framework idea. Uh, this is the legal agreement. Um, nothing has changed, but now we have it in writing. Um, it's, it, this is a pretty straightforward initiative, and I, I think this uh, contract is very straightforward as well. Um, pages one through five are standard contractual language where the lawyers earn their money. Um, uh, something we nailed down is the agreement is for initial two-year term with uh, successive one-year terms after that. Um, this also grants us access to customer information, which is a question that came up last month. We'll sign up, we get their contact information. So we'll know who signs up, we'll be able to communicate with them about other sustainability things or waste management, recycling, um, help us build out sort of a electronic mailing list for things like that. Uh, page six is just a simple signature page. Page seven through eight is exhibit A, which outlines the specifics of the program. Again, these are all the details we discussed in that last month. Nothing, nothing has changed, it's just here in writing. And then the last two pages, pages nine and 10, just maps outlining pro boundaries. Um, one of the uh, sort of pleasant things we arrived at in, in further discussions with them was, um, you know, whether or not all borough residents would automatically enroll at a discounted rate if current borough residents who are customers uh, would a discounted rate and they agree to all of that. So it doesn't matter if we are proactively recruiting people, anyone who signs up in the municipal boundaries will be eligible for the existing customers. Any comments or questions from people uh, here? Yeah, come on up, please. And if you could give us your name and your street address. Hi, it's Ellie Kisson. Um, I'm at 615 Downing and Pike. Um, Ellie Kisson. Yeah. Um, and I'm just really excited that this is happening because it happened at my old place and it sounds like a really good idea. Thank you. Um, Okay, so that would be a 3 of Item number 11, uh, September meeting minutes. 3 for item number 11. Any uh, other business? Okay, good. Um, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.